coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Starship lost in spectacular test stand explosion. French government shutters some Israeli stands at Paris Air Show. Red tape blocks a second week of Rhinebeck Air Shows. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Talently. Let's get into today's stories. Starship lost in spectacular test stand explosion. A SpaceX Starship second stage, Ship 36, mounted on a test stand loading fuel for a static fire test, was destroyed in a huge explosion that was seen and heard for miles around Starbase in South Texas. SpaceX posted, quote, on Wednesday, June 18th at approximately 11 p.m. Central, the Starship preparing for the 10th flight test experienced an anomaly while on a test stand at Starbase. After completing a single-engine static fire earlier this week, the vehicle was in the process of loading cryogenic propellant for a six-engine static fire when a sudden energetic event resulted in the complete loss of Starship and damage to the immediate area surrounding the stand. The explosion ignited several fires at the test site, which remain clear of personnel and will be assessed once it has been determined to be safe to approach. Individuals should not attempt to approach the area while safing operations continue." End quote. SpaceX said all personnel were safe and accounted for since the safety zone was established around the test site. Quote, engineering teams are actively investigating the incident and will follow established procedures to determine root cause. Initial analysis indicates the potential failure of a pressurized tank known as a COPV, or composite overwrapped pressure vessel, containing gaseous nitrogen in Starship's nose cone area. But the full data review is ongoing. There is no commonality between the COPVs used on Starship and SpaceX's Falcon rockets. After the break, MCI's new Starlink mini-compatible USB-C charger. The legendary BD4C program is building an exciting future for those who want a rugged four-seat family flyer with a proven history. The SureWings program produces a complete kit and builder assist program that gives you everything you need to be flying a BD4CS in record time. For conventional kit builders, BD Aviation has parts, partial kits, and full kits for the 190 mile per hour BD4C that has logged thousands of hours. Visit Sherwings.com and BDAviation.com for more details. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. MCI's new Starlink mini-compatible USB-C charger. Mid-Continent Instruments and Avionics brought out its new True Blue Power TA360 Max Power USB-C charger at this year's 55th Paris Air Show at Le Bourget Airport, the only charger TSO certified for aviation and compatible with the Starlink Mini, delivering up to 100 watts per port that will also charge an electronic flight bag, laptop, tablet, or smartphone. In addition, it enables the benefits of connectivity previously available only to passengers of larger aircraft with permanently installed connectivity solutions, such as streaming movies, and video calls. Honda's reusable rocket completes launch and landing test. Honda's experimental reusable rocket has completed a launch and landing test, reaching an altitude of nearly 300 meters before returning to its targeted touchdown. While the flight only lasted for around a minute, it was able to successfully demonstrate flight stability and landing. The vehicle, standing 6.3 meters tall and weighing just over 1,300 kilograms, reached an altitude of 271.4 meters and landed just 37 centimeters off target. The entire flight lasted 56.6 seconds, making it as short and controlled as Honda engineers had planned. B-25 Miss Mitchell to show out for Menominee's Airport Day. In August, the commemorative Air Force's legendary B-25 bomber will be part of a very special Freedom of Flight event at Michigan's Menominee Regional Airport. Rides on Miss Mitchell will be offered to veterans and open for public purchase. The Menominee Regional Airport will host its annual Airport Day event, Freedom of Flight, on Saturday, August 2, 2025, from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. The free family-friendly experience is open to the public and will take place at 2801 22nd Street, just northwest of the city's business district. Textron gets order for two Sky Couriers at Paris Air Show. 
Textron Aviation announced that Tassili Travail Arian has signed an order for two Cessna Sky Courier aircraft that represent the first purchase of an aeromedical configured Sky Courier, as well as the first Sky Courier purchased in Africa. TTA is based in Algeria and is a subsidiary of Sonatrac, the national state-owned oil and gas company. TTA provides services to the energy sector across Algeria that include passenger transport, aeromedical evacuation, and special mission services. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. French government shutters some Israeli stands at Paris Air Show. The French government reportedly pressured organizers of the Paris Air Show to put up barriers to hide the booth exhibits of some of the Israeli companies that included displays of kinetic weapons, while the exhibits of the Israeli Defense Ministry and several other Israeli company exhibits remained open. The partitions were erected when the exhibitors reportedly refused to remove the weapons from the displays. The hidden stands were used by Elbit Systems, Raphael, IAI, and Uvision. It was reported that the order came from the French government after the companies did not comply with a French security agency to remove the weapons. The Israeli Defense Ministry said it rejected the order to remove some of the weapon systems from the displays, and exhibition organizers then put up black partitions from the public. Boaz Levy, IAI's president and chief executive, said the black partitions were reminiscent of, quote, the dark days of when Jews were segmented from European society, end quote. Meshar Sassen, a senior vice president at Elbit Systems, accused France of trying to stymie competition, pointing to a series of contracts that Elbit has won in Europe. France has historically been a longtime friend of Israel, but has stiffened its opposition to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government because of its military actions in Gaza and other strikes in the region. After these messages, red tape blocks a second week of Rhinebeck airshows. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Meet the first of a new generation of the M-Class family. The M700 Fury. An aircraft worthy of the name and indomitable force. The M700 Fury transcends traditional limits with more power, blistering performance, a finely appointed interior, and the luxury of what matters most, time. Experience the Fury. Join the legacy. Welcome back. Red Tate blocks a second week of Rhinebeck air shows. The old Rhinebeck Aerodrome has canceled a second weekend of events, further delaying the start of its 2025 air show season. The organization clarified that the setback is out of its control, with two of its three air bosses awaiting reauthorization from the FAA. The Aerodrome's 2025 show season was expected to run every weekend, starting in mid-June and ending on October 19th. Each airshow features vintage displays, character performances, and pre-show access to aircraft and pilots. On June 13th, just a day before the show season was scheduled to begin, organizers were forced to call off the opening weekend's events. While not many specifics were given, it's clear that regulatory hurdles were to blame. These suspicions were unfortunately confirmed more recently when the aerodrome canceled another weekend of airshows. Organization president and chief pilot Clay Hammond explained that, quote, Two of our air bosses came up due for renewal at the end of last season, and that renewal process was begun on time and with intent to have finished before the start of 2025 air shows. Alas, these renewals have not been granted despite our best efforts, end quote. With two of the aerodrome certified air bosses awaiting FAA approval, and the third having experienced a family emergency, old Rhinebeck's show season remains unopened. Weekend three remains in limbo. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.